Hey there, and welcome back to MurderTube. I'm going to apologize right away for if I pronounce any of the names in this case wrong. This is a case that is heartbreaking for two reasons. The first is, of course, the actual death itself, the cause of death, the reason of the death. And the second is that this is not an isolated incident at all. These types of deaths happen all the time and have happened for many years. Although laws on these are changing, there are still hundreds and sometimes thousands of these types of deaths every year. This is the case of Parveen Rafiq. There are very few details available online about Parveen's early life, and I think that is due to the location. None of the sources even seem to know what her date of birth is. Some sources call her Parveen Rafiq, and some call her Parveen Bibi. I believe Bibi is her maiden name and Rafiq is her married name, but I couldn't actually confirm that for sure. She was born in Pakistan, and that is where she lived all of her life. She did get married and had four or five children with her husband, but unfortunately, around 10 years ago, she became a widow. Losing her husband did play a small part in the horrific acts that she would later do, although it is certainly not the only reason. Out of the four or five Rafiq children, one of them in particular was a bright, loving, and full of life young girl, Zinat Rafiq. On the 8th of June 2016, while Zinat was already tied up to a bed, she was beaten, choked to near death, and then her own mother doused her in kerosene and burned her alive. Parveen then immediately went out into the local streets and started shouting and boasting to anyone nearby that she had just murdered her own daughter. After their father had died, Parveen's relationship with her daughters started to deteriorate. She would become abusive to her daughters whenever she felt that they were disobeying her, which over the years became more and more common. And in Parveen's mind, this was due to there being no man in the house to help rein the daughters in. But Zina was not a bad child at all. She was a bright young girl that had a passion for music, poetry, and selfies. While still in school, Zina met Hassan Khan and the couple started dating, and they dated for many years. Hassan was nearly a couple years older than Zinat and would later become a motorcycle mechanic. It was this relationship that caused issues in the Rafiq family. Zinat was a Punjabi, but Hassan was an ethnic Pashtun. Parveen would never allow any of her daughters to marry a Pashtun. Hassan even said, Zinat's family was very bad. She was often beaten by her mother just for nothing. Her mother also knew about her affair, and once her brother beaten her so severe that she had three stitches over her head. The young couple loved each other, but even after five years of dating, they knew Parveen would never give them permission to marry. In May of 2016, Zinat showed up at Hassan's house, distressed and with a bloody lip and a bloody nose from being beaten by her brother and mother once again. She just wanted to be taken away. She wanted to get married and spend the rest of her life with the love of her life and leave her family behind her. So the young lovers eloped. They got married and she stayed at Hassan's house with him and his parents, her new in-laws. But after just four days of being married, Zinat's family showed up at the house. They claimed that it would bring shame and dishonor onto the Rafiq family if people found out that the young couple had eloped and had this secret wedding without family members and without permission. So they proposed bringing Zinat home. They would take about eight days to plan an actual proper traditional wedding with permission, inviting family members, and after the young couple got married, then they could live together, and it would be done in an honorable, traditional way that would not bring any shame on either family. Zinat was terrified, and she was unwilling to go home. She was fearful that her own family would kill her. 
Zenat's family and her new family-in-law discussed what to do. And eventually they agreed to it for one reason. And that was because one of Zenat's uncles guaranteed her safety. He promised that not even one hair on her head would be harmed. It would just take the eight days and then the young couple could live together again. So Zenat went home. After just two days of being home, she called Hassan to tell him that her family had gone back on their word, and she asked that he come pick her up. He said that they should wait out the promised eight days, not cause any more trouble, and it won't be very long before they can be back together. Zenat's brother and mother tied her to a bed and would beat her. On the morning of the seventh day, one day before she was supposed to return, they beat her, choked her nearly to death, doused her in kerosene, and then burned her alive. They left her burned body atop the stairs. Parveen then went out into the streets, pounding on a chest, and boasting to everyone, People, I have killed my daughter for misbehaving and given our family a bad name. Unfortunately, honor killings like this are certainly not new, and they happen often in some of these countries, and although the laws are tightening up on them, there are still kind of loopholes that can get people short sentences, or sometimes even forgiven by the family members and let out of jail completely. Harveen and her son learned the tough way that sometimes justice is served. They were both charged under anti-terrorism laws and tried in an anti-terrorism court. They showed no remorse and offered no apologies for what they had done. The brother was sentenced to life in prison. His defense does claim that he has been wrongfully convicted. Parveen, who told the court she murdered her daughter for bringing shame to her family, was sentenced to death. Parveen's family remained defiant that it was Zenat's fault, and none of Zenat's family even sought to claim the young girl's body. It was her husband and her family-in-law that claimed the body and had the funeral for her. Just 11 days after getting married, Hassan buried his wife. The distraught and suicidal young man is just left with pictures and memories of the love of his life, along with a poem that she wrote for him that he keeps in his wallet. I love you, I kiss you, I love you, I miss you. I take your name with every breath, I see you in every dream, I want to see you all the time. Zenat was terrified and helpless at the hands of her very own family for seven days. And to them, the honor of the Rafiq name was way more important than the happiness, welfare, and even life of their own flesh and blood. In some previous videos, I have said that the death is a pointless loss of life, and that statement definitely fits in this case. Zina was just 18 years old and murdered by her own family because of the man that she wanted to marry. And Hassan wasn't a bad guy at all, it was purely just racism because he was not a Punjabi. But let me know your thoughts on this case in the comments below, and remember try to keep it somewhat respectful. Like the video if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, let me know why. And be sure to subscribe. And stay safe out there guys, it is a very crazy world.